Do power and exponential functions describe real phenomena? Let's take the following viral load data. We have time in days, and we have an observation which happens to be viral load. And this is given as the value at each of these different days. And what we'd like to do is have some type of functional relationship between the two. And so what we could do is infer what might happen in non-measurement times, extend it into the future, and try to maybe understand what effect some drug or something has. And in order to do this, we need to have some type of functional relationship. And so the first thing that we might try is, is there a linear relationship? Is the observation or the dependent variable a linear function of the independent variable, which in this case is time? So we can plot the dependent variable, which is y, and we can label that y-axis as y, the, the dependent variable, and we take the independent variable as time and label the x-axis then as time. We plot these points, so we just go through and plot these five points in order. Roughly we can draw a line through the first three, very close. So it looks like there's a linear relationship, but then something perverse happens. The last two points take off in a totally different direction, and this is indicative that there is no linear relationship. Is there another relationship? Most functions aren't linear, of course. Is there a power relationship? Is there an exponential relationship? How could we tell? And that's the point of what we're talking about here. And so in order to answer this, what we have to do is be able to transform these relationships. And we do this by taking logs in one direction and exponentiating or taking the exponential function in the other direction. So suppose that y, c, and d are all non-negative. Then the relationship y is equal to cd, this is equivalent to log of y being equal to the log of cd, and then noting that log turns multiplication into addition, this is equivalent to y, log of y being equal to log of c plus the log of d. And we're going to get these different power and exponential relationships by changing what d is. So in the exponential test, we use a semi-log plot, and we'll describe what that means. So if we do this taking logs that we just described, but now in the particular case that d is equal to b to the t, so the exponential function with base b, we have that y is equal to c times b to the t, that's an exponential relationship, with c and b greater than zero. This is equivalent to log of y being the log of c plus the log of b to the t. But then we can use the third identity that we came up with for logarithms, that we can take that power, t, out in front. So this is just equal to t times log of b. Then what we could do is we could reflect and see log y is equal to a constant plus t times another constant. Well, that's the description of a line. And not only that, but it's a line where the slope is the log of b and the y-intercept is the log of c. So the log base doesn't really matter. I've just chosen to use 10 here. As long as you're consistent and you use it, the same base everywhere, the same sort of thing will happen. Uh, log base 10 is a bit of a convention. So now the idea is, well, let's not plot y as a dependent variable, but rather log y. And if we do that, what we can do is copy these first two rows just as before, but now let's add in a third row, which is just the log of the second. And that's the new dependent variable. So we're not going to plot y anymore, but rather log y. And if we do that, we, we can just take the log of each, each one of these points. You can plug them in your calculate, verify that my calculations are essentially right. And then we can plot them. So we go and we look at time 1, and then we go up to log y, which is 1.9. We could plot them, and then we could plot the other four points as well. So we should label this dependent axis as log, log of y, which I've done here, and the independent one is still t. Nothing has changed there. So after we plot these five points, what we can see is we can see that now we can draw, use our ruler and draw a very good line through them, which suggests that there is a linear relationship here. Now it's important to note that this particular graph is called a semi-log plot since one axis, the dependent one, is in a log scale, but the other one is still in a non-log scale, a natural scale. We can go and we can now analyze this line a little bit better. We can look at the intercept. The y-intercept looks like it's 
essentially two. Maybe it might be a hair above two, but let's just use two to make life simple. We can also estimate the slope. So for the run, we can go from zero to 10. So we're gonna be dividing by 10. And for the rise, well, the rise actually is a decline because it's going down. So at 10, it looks like it's equal to 1.13, say, and it started at two. So the rise is 1.13 minus two, it's gonna be a negative number. Divide that by 10, and what we get is minus 0.087. So the equation of the line is the intercept two minus 0.087 times t. And this looks like a very good line. So how do we get the actual relationship? We exponentiate. So we go back to going the other direction. So first we took logarithms, now we go in the reverse direction, we exponentiate. So take 10 to the power of both sides. So 10 to the power log 10, y just gives us y. And then the two then gives us 10 squared. And then we also have 10 to the minus 0.087t. 10 squared is just 100. We can take that t out by properties of the exponential. So we could just rewrite that as 10 to the minus 0.087 all to the t. This negative just means reciprocal. So we can flip that around and we can write this as 100 times one over 10 to the 0.087 all to the t. If we calculate that one over 10 to the 0.087, we're gonna find that that's approximately 0.818. So the relationship we have is that y is approximately 100 times 0.818 to the t. That's an exponential relationship in the sense that the observation is a constant times an exponential function of the independent variable. Let's take another example. So say we had the following data. We had x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, y is 2, 6, 10, 16, 22, 32. So the first thing we should do, repeating again, we should check is there a linear relationship. We could plot all these points and see if this is a line like we did before, but rather than that, let's just check the successive slopes. So the slope going from the first point to the second point, going from the second point to the third point, etc. These would have to be essentially the same for a linear relationship. The first slope would be 6 minus 2 over 2 minus 1, that's 4. The second slope would be 10 minus 6 over 3 minus 2, that's also 4, so that's good. But then the next one would be 16 over 10 over 4 minus 3, which of course 1, so that's 6. The one after that, also 6. And the last one is 8. So we don't have a linear relationship at all. We go 4, 4, 6, 6, 8, that's not good. Exponential, is there an exponential relationship? Well, as we just saw in the previous example, that's the same as saying there's a linear one in log y. Let's try that. So just as before, we extend by third row, but the third row being the logarithm of the second row. And then we take the independent variable still to be x and the dependent one to be y. But now instead of plotting it, let's just check the successive slopes and see how we do. So the first slope would be 0.78 minus 0.3 over two minus one. This is 0.48. The next one would be one minus 0.78 over one is 0.22. That doesn't look very good. The next one is 0.2. So at this point, we have three different, quite different slopes. And so there is no exponential relationship, at least no apparent one. So what do we do? Well, before what we did is we took log of y to get a different relationship. Let's try taking log of x. So both log of x and log of y. So now what we do is we extend both. We take the dependent, the dependent variable and take the logarithm of that, that would produce log y, but we also take the independent one, take the logarithm of that, and that we would treat as the new independent variable. So you can check my, my data here, but the last two rows here, so the first two are just our original data, and the last two, these are just the logarithms of successively the first and second row. And now we think of log of x as the independent variable and log of y as the dependent one. So our axes are log of x and log of y. So we're now looking at a log-log plot because both scales are in the logarithm. And if we plot this, you can check these values in your calculator. I'm pretty sure I didn't make a mistake. It's just punching logarithms on these numbers. Um, we can plot these and we can see that the first point is 0 0.3 and then the other five points follow here. And now, look, 
we can draw a beautiful line through these points. It's essentially hitting all of these points. And so we do have a nice linear relationship in this log-log scale. We can go on. And what we can do is we can find what this linear relationship is. So looking at the graph, the intercept is essentially this first point, which is point three, the y-intercept. And the slope, what we can get is we can take the run to be 0.5, so going from 0 to 0.5, and then it looks, well, what's the rise? Well, we wind up, it looks like, at 1.05, and we started at 0.3, so the rise is 0.75, and the run is 0.5, so the slope is 1.5. So from that, we have that log y is equal to 0.3 plus 1.5 log x. That's the linear relationship in the log-log scale. How do we get back? We exponentiate. So we first, though, want to do a log rule. So we can simplify the 1.5 log, log of x. We can bring that 1.5 and put it as a power of x by that third log rule that we've learned. And then we exponentiate. So if we exponentiate, what we get is on the left, we get y, because 10 to the log base 10 of y is just y. And then we get 10 to the 0.3 for that first term, and that's going to turn out to be very close to 2. And then we're going to get 10 to the log base 10 of x to the 1.5. By the cancellation identities, the, the 10 to the power of log base 10 just cancel, and so that will just give us x to the 1.5. So our final relationship is 2 times x to the 1.5. If we just look for a second why this worked, what we could do is to go back to our taking logs idea, but now take d to be x to the p. If we do that, then the power relationship, y is equal to c times x to the p, with c and x positive, that's equivalent to log of y being equal to log of c plus log of x to the p. But again, we can take that power p outside in front of the log. So that could just be written as p times log of x. And this is the equation of a line. You have the new dependent variable in the log scale, y, is equal to some constant plus another constant, which is p, times the new independent variable in log scale. And so this is a line with slope p and y-intercept log c. And the idea which we just did was to plot the two variables x and y, but both in the log scale. So our take home message from this lecture is what we do is we look for a constant slope relationship. If that occurs between the original independent variable x and log y, the log of the observations, then the intercept is log c and the slope is log b and the relationship we have is exponential y is equal to c times b to the x. If the constant slope relationship is between log log in the log log scale, then the intercept again is, the y-intercept again is log c, but now the slope is p, and the equation, the relationship equation is y is equal to c times x to the p.